Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. I am Samantha and the gentleman on the lawnmower, Stephen. All right, guys, so today we're doing a little uh, housekeeping here at Starkey Farmstead. I just wanted to show you something. See that wheelbarrow? As my husband is cutting, I started cutting. He went to help a neighbor out. And uh, when he got back, I was like, I'm going to water down. <clears throat> I was like, okay, let's swap. One, because I don't like to ride the lawnmower when it's tilting into the ditch. Kind of not quite there. So, what I started doing, I went and got my wheelbarrow, my good yard rake, and I started raking up, you know, all this thick grass. Because in Louisiana, we went an entire month with no rain. And then it poured rain in July. And now we're beginning of August and the grass is extremely thick. This is a good thing. It's a good thing. One, it's beautiful when it's cut. Two, some of it's going back into the garden as mulch that will break down into compost and nutrients for my fruits and vegetables. It won't help now, but it will help the next time that I plant. You know, this time next year, I'll be thankful I did this little bit of work. But really what I wanted to show you is where I'm gonna put this wheelbarrow full of leaves and cut grass, right? It's going into my chicken coop. I noticed the other day when I was walking by, I'm starting to be able to smell a little bit of chicken. That's what I call it. Ooh, I smell a little bit of chicken. All right, I don't like that smell. Not only that, I have quails and rabbits and that same get up. So it's very important that I keep my soil covered in a heavy mulch system that can be rolled and turned. And as it's rolled and turned, A, by me once a week, B, by the chickens daily, hourly, seconds. Every second they're out there, they're digging and playing in it. I am creating compost that will then be used back into my garden, okay? That's called a closed loop sustainable system. I want to point out that the biggest thing that I'm seeing most people do is, hey, I'm going to start, you know, start chickens. I'm going to get chickens. Oh my gosh, it just cost me $800 to buy chickens, get a coop set up, and I've got to wait four months for eggs. Come on, guys. All they're doing is training. They have trained you your whole life to be a consumer. Let Starkey Formstead help you learn to be a producer. All right. We're going to teach you to lower your input cost and rise. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna rise. We're going to push it up. We're going to raise your output products and what you can actually get money for. Okay. If your outputs that you are getting are lower than the inputs that you are purchasing, then you are losing money and it makes no sense. You're not homesteading if that's happening to you in every sustainable loop on your farm. Okay, guys, don't let it hurt your feelings. Let it educate you. You are not homesteading. You are hobby farming. All right. That's okay. If that's what you want to do. If you're not butchering out your animals for meat, you just have chickens for eggs, but they're literally costing you $30 a week in, in scratch feed and, and then laying pellets. And then you get some babies and now it's costing you $50 a week and you're only getting three dozen eggs. Wow, you just lost your butt all the way across the board on that deal. And then when, when the predators come and attack your coops, cause they'll come, I told you guys that we had chickens and rabbits and quail, some form or all of them, including red wigglers, on our property now for two and a half years. We just got hit the first time. It took two and a half years before the predators, I guess, located us on a map, maybe because we were small and we're staying in. That's all we're trying to teach you guys, okay? You cannot continue to work a job, take all that money to create systems on your farm that you still have to work a job to be able to sustain the system. That's not gonna continue to work, all right? My husband works a job. All of his money goes to our bills, our savings, and us just living life the best that we can live. Every make, everything that I make working the form rolls back into the form. So it doesn't cost, yes, my love. Hello guys, today we're going to talk about sustainable loop systems and how we are an Alpha Omega regenerative form model. Let me explain that to you. 
So say you have chickens, okay? Now, in your chicken coop, I see a lot of people talking about that they have concrete so that they can clean. They have um, sand on the ground. They have pebbles, whatever it is that you have. And then they wonder about, well, I want to let them free range because I want them to be able to eat more naturally and I want them to be healthier. I don't want them to be only on pelleted feed. Well, let me explain to you how you can kind of sort of do all of that in one system as well as creating your compost for your garden all in one spot. So what you need to do is you need to get a wheelbarrow, you need to get a rake, and when your spouse is out here in this Louisiana heat or wherever you're from and they're cutting grass, you're going to start collecting all those grass clippings and all of that, the leaves, and you're going to get them in your wheelbarrow. You're going to take them to your chicken coop and you're going to dump them in there. All right, now what's going to happen? Over the next week, my chickens are going to dig through all of that cut grass, all of those leaves, and they're basically going to shred it turning it into a fine powder compost. And once a week I go into that coop, I take a shovel or a pitchfork, and I flip this deep, and I flip it to the top, putting their poop to the bottom, fresh compost to the top. Then they spend an entire week digging through that for me, taking out all of the bugs, all of the weed seeds, any decomposing materials, and continuing to break that down steadily until when I need compost, I take the same wheelbarrow, go back into the same coop, and voila, Starkey Barnstead has ready-made compost. So if you guys see that, what we did is we started with chickens. In the process of deep mulching in their coop, we created an end product called compost. We also created another end product and eggs, okay? The best thing is, I have healthy chickens that never need antibiotics. I naturally worm them. I don't have any pecking each other going on. I don't have any soft eggs. I don't, to this day, see any lice or mites. My chickens get to be chickens. They get to free range out of their coop into their run, all the making compost for me. And the whole time they're protected within that six foot fence with the German Shepherd. It's a system that you can't beat, guys. So that is what we mean when we say Alpha Omega regenerative form model. You take a beginning input and you create multiple outputs. I also get chicken meat from that system as my animals grow out. So that's all we're trying to show you guys today is how you can make more money on your farmstead form or hobby form. Okay, notice where all of our chickens go in. Out of the run, back to the coop. They already know what's coming. It's mulching time, ladies. Now you can tell how wet the ground is on this section of their actual coop. Well, this is how summer in Louisiana happens to be. Much drier over here. You notice how he's just kind of spreading it out? I can tell you guys that normally I do three or four wheelbarrows full of this when I do this. This is just one wheelbarrow full. Now, some people are going to say, well, <laughs> will this get stuck in their croup? Will this, you know, bring bugs and stuff into their pen? Well, it will be bring bugs. If you have grasshoppers and stuff when you're cutting grass, spiders, grasshoppers, all of them are going to be in these grass clippings, right? Well, your chickens are going to eat them. They love them. They're even going to eat some of this grass. Really? Of course, I threw a tomato in there when I was out in the garden. I noticed a tomato that was messed up. And they're just going to start scratching through this because, guys, chickens love to scratch. But this is actually my compost. I've done other videos. You can look them up in All Things Chickens and Quail in that playlist. And it'll actually show you from the outside how how deep it actually is in here in the coop. They love it. They love to scratch. Give them something to scratch. I don't have to let my chickens per se free range because I bring everything that they need to be chickens right here. I mean, they love it. Look at them. These are happy chickens.
Now here is where they lay their eggs. I've got a broody hen sitting on about 18 eggs in there right now. Here are the quail. They poop right here. I deep mulch this area too. I need to go get some more, layer it down there. They're gonna dig through that. It's got a lot of black soldier fly larvae that get down in there. They Chickens just dig it back out and eat it. They have this whole run right here, which would be considered their free ranging. And when I use vegetables, I open up my front door, I walk out here and I toss this and they begin to eat all the leftover vegetables for me. But look where they are right now. They'd rather be in their coop. Why? Because the coop is set up in a very natural way for them. Okay, let's recap. Pick whatever you have on your farm that you would like to see begin to produce more outputs than it causes inputs. What do I mean by that? Say you're gonna pick chickens, is what we did the video on. But say you choose quail, or even rabbits, sheep, goats, cows, even horses. How can you lower the input cost for these animals? You may need to begin setting up sustainable loop systems. A lot of our animals here eat the vegetables that I can't sell, can't can, and can't eat myself. They eat them. So I have a zero waste there goes back into the compost in the chicken pen. So I'm lowering my feed cost for my chickens every single day when they get a buffet of fresh organic vegetables right here off their own farm. So remember that you want to lower your inputs and you want to increase your outputs so that when you do have an input cost guys, you're in the positive, all right? You're out of the red. So today, if I needed to go buy some more chicken wire for whatever reason, I actually have the money. The chickens have already made that money for me. All right, so they have already made that for me. That money is available, it's there, it's earmarked for them, and I can spend it without ever touching the money that I need for my bills or anything else. When we discuss these systems with you, we want you to understand that you literally can do this across your entire Formstead, homestead, or form. If you are a hobby form, you can do this too. You, you honestly can, like I encourage it. But I find more often than not, people who have hobby forms just want the animals because it brings you comfort. That's great, that's fine. They, they work literally to support their hobby form. In the economy that we're currently in, with the supply chains failing, with the cost and the inflation steadily going up, with your electric bills going through the roof, guys, your gas prices, everything, you're going to have to really examine where is your money going? What is causing a deficit on your form or your homestead or your farmstead or your hobby form? What is the problem? Where is your money? Where is the, the hole that's sucking your money out? And you're going to have to work to close the hole. It takes time. That's why we're putting these video out. This is why we keep telling you, let's row in each other's boats. Tell us what you're doing. We'll tell you what we're doing because you can do this too. It is an alpha omega regenerative form model that will constantly show you how to decrease inputs onto your property while constantly creating profitable outputs. So you guys have a blessed day. I hope this video helped. I'm asking you again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Because when you do that, these videos get out to more and more people. If you're watching all of our videos and you hit the like button, but you never comment, the way that YouTube works is less people are gonna see it. I need you to like, comment, and subscribe, guys, so we can get the word out. We can educate people. We can help people prepare properly for what's coming, okay? I know there's a lot of YouTube sites out there, but we are unique in the fact that we're actually profitable here because we have set up sustainable loop systems over and over and over. And as you go on this journey with us, I promise you, you are welcome to see everything that I'm doing. You are welcome to hear every step that we take. We're here to help you. 
We'll walk through it with you. If you have questions, please ask them. If I don't make something clear, if I confuse you, don't just stop watching. Educate yourself. Be like, okay, Sam, that made no sense. Explain that to me again. Guys, I don't mind explaining anything. My husband tells me I love to talk. I don't really love to talk. I like to educate and I like to be educated. So if you're doing something a little different, if you've got a special unique twist, please tell me, I will try it. I am so down with that, especially if it makes sense to me. The only things I will not try, and I've told y'all this before, if it flat just does not make sense to me or it goes against my ethical beliefs or my Christian values, I'm not doing it. However, everything else is up for fair game. We might even come to where you're located, your farm, do a YouTube video with you. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Coming to you from Starkey Farmstead.